Good morning. Thank you for joining me as we work our way through the Word of God. We're strengthened, encouraged by God through His Word by the Holy Spirit. We're in Philippians chapter 4. Today we're going to look at verses 19 and 20. We are coming to a close of this letter that Paul wrote to the Philippian church, uh, a letter of encouragement, a letter of joy, a letter of challenge to, to go deep in their rootedness in Christ, that they would grow mighty in the fruit of the Holy Spirit and character and kindness as they serve and love one another. Today, before we get into the Word of God, would you join me as we pray? I'll read the passage and hopefully, Lord willing, have some helpful encouragement for you. Let's pray. Father, your word is truth. I ask now that by the Holy Spirit, through your holy word, you would speak to point us and deepen us in Christ our Savior, and that we might live to the glory and praise and honor of your mighty name. We thank you, God, for your love for us and your love that was demonstrated in the sending of your Son, who, while we were yet sinners, died for us. And as he died for us, we die in him, that in him we also might become the righteousness of God. Root and ground us, Lord, in the assurance and certainty of your promise. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Paul has thanked the Philippians for their support. He's taught them about the importance and the significance of their participation in his ministry and, and how a blessing from God results in, and is connected to this. And then Paul, uh, in one of those coffee mug verses, one of those verses that we, we all would benefit greatly from memorizing and having rooted deep in our soul, Paul writes this, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This promise, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus, is not a promise that divests us from responsibility, but it properly orders our responsibility. God is the giver of all good things. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. The Lord is the one who at the very word of his mouth speaks all things into existence. Every promise God makes, God performs. God does not make a vow that he will not carry through on. So Paul with confidence is saying, and not saying merely as an academic principle, but he knows this as an experience in his life, that God supplies every need, every need, not want, every need. God will supply every need of yours and every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We must look to Jesus Christ, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, it is in Christ, by the Spirit, from the Father, for the glory of God, that we are provided all things. And that's why Paul will then end with, uh, to God and to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. God as our caretaker, God as our corrector, God as our shepherd, God as our Lord. God as our protector, God as um, our provider. Paul is saying, look to Jesus. If we have a need, look to Jesus. What did Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount? He said, you know, don't worry about tomorrow, to, tomorrow because today has enough troubles of his own. And, and, and he's talking about not being anxious about anything, but look to God knowing that even in the creation, the birds of the air and the flowers of the field are tended to by God. Are you not of more value than they? I don't know what your need may be today. Not want, what your need may be today. But please, let God know it. Remind God. God knows already. But, but in reminding God in prayer, we're actually being reminded ourselves that God is the one 
who provides and supplies for our every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Cry out to him and see how God can and will miraculously work in your life. Cry out to him. God is the supplier of every good and perfect gift. Lord be with you. I'll see you again tomorrow.